and welcome to another episode of What's on Your Plate. I'm Caroline Downing. We've got a great show for you this week. First, let's check in with some rider students to see what their favorite cookie recipes are. My favorite cookie recipe would have to be macadamia nut cranberry. Oatmeal raisin probably, with a little nuts in there. My favorite cookie recipe is lace cookies. With sugar cookies? Um, oatmeal raisin cookies, definitely. My favorite cookie is a peanut butter cookie with the Hershey Kiss on top. Chocolate chip. Those were great. Now let's check out a little something I found on my own. Hi, and welcome to Chow Time with Caroline. Today we're going to put a new twist on the chocolate chip cookie called the Rocky Road Pizza. First thing you need, two cups of chocolate chip cookie mix, about a cup of mini marshmallows, a cup of chocolate chips, and half a cup of peanuts. First thing you want to do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Next thing you want to do is grease the cookie sheet. Next thing you want to do is take the cookie dough. This is soft, it'll probably make it a little bit easier. You want to press it down to create the crust. This cookie sheet's a little bit bigger than you'd want it, so we're only going to use about half, maybe less. Like I said, it's a little bit less than half of the cookie sheet. What we're going to do just so it looks a little bit neater is cut off this edge so at least this is a straight line. Now you have your pizza dough. It's time to go in the oven for about 12 to 17 minutes, but ovens vary in power and heat, so you should probably check on about every five minutes. It's hot. Now it's time to take the cookie dough out of the oven and add the rest of your ingredients. Make sure to wear pot holders because it can be really hot. You can put the ingredients on the cookie dough in whatever order you want, but it will probably work out the best if you do it this way. Marshmallows first, then chocolate chips, then the peanuts, and the caramel last. Make sure that all the ingredients are spread out evenly. Next, you want to add the chocolate chips. You probably want to put them where there aren't marshmallows, that way they'll melt better. You get tired of sprinkling them. Peanuts come next. Again, at this point, it doesn't really matter where they go. Everything will bake in together. Then after you put them on, you can kind of spread everything out. The last thing you want to put on it before it goes back in the oven is the caramel, and you can put about as much as you want. Mmm. It's time for the cookie pizza to go back in the oven with its toppings for about eight minutes.
Now your pizza is ready to come out of the oven. Let your pizza cool for about 10 minutes and enjoy. I'll see you next week in Chow Time with Caroline. See you later. I wonder if those cookies are on Tom's diet. Let's check in with him, 20 and 10 with Tom. A few weeks in, Tom and I have been in the gym with some successes and failures. It's going to be an uphill battle for a few more weeks, but we feel that we are making some good progress. Here's week three of 20 and 10. Uh, for this week, uh, for Tom and myself working out, uh, I thought it would be good to do some research because, uh, you know, I've been working out for, I guess, a few years now, and um, I, f I, I know some general facts, but overall, obviously, I thought it would be good to uh, check with uh, what experts would say online. Uh, I found some good information, different types of workouts, but a lot on, like, men's fitness and men's health uh, com. a lot of it was, like, kind of junk workouts that me and Tom, it just wouldn't wouldn't really fit um, because of like I guess our, our skill level or uh, like the weight loss goals that you know we're trying to accomplish with him. Um, but I found some good stuff, some stuff for him uh, that we used and implemented this week uh, in the gym. I, I also found something for myself too. One of the things Dan uh, really emphasized was starting to get on a wake program. Uh, he came in with his workout uh, plan that he had researched and he uh, just started putting me to work right away. We went in, we started doing squats. Uh, it, was, it started feeling very natural to me as soon as I started getting up there. It was very, uh, you know, very, I don't want to say easy, but it was not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Went pretty well. Uh, the legs uh, are, you know, generally stronger than uh, the muscles. Tom's legs are going to be stronger than the muscles in his upper body. Um, so I think he was pretty comfortable with it. Uh, we didn't do a lot of weight, but I think form is more important. The bench press didn't go quite as well. Bench press, I think, was, um, well, in the short of it was not as easy as the um, as the squats. When we got up there, Dan was doing it first. He was just showing me the proper form, just trying to get me back into that sort of mentality. But when I get, went up there, uh, it everything just went sour. I had a lot of issue just even just keeping the thing balanced. So you could just picture it, you know, I'm holding this beam and one arm is going all out and the other one's just trailing behind trying to get everything set. I mean, if you were watching, you'd think it's funny, but to me it was, uh, it was kind of embarrassing. Moving on to a uh, chest press. It was a lot easier since it was a machine, it wasn't a free weight. So if I had any issues, you know, I wasn't afraid of just stopping. Um, but a chest press with the machine was very easy. Uh, I felt like maybe I should have put on more weights, but Dan kept emphasizing the fact that it's more about your form and just being able to do the reps correctly than it is about how much weight that you put on. Abs were rough, uh, to, say, to say the least. I was telling Dan I wanted to do regular, uh, regular sit-ups, but we decided to go with an inverted sit-up so we got on the uh, the decline, uh, the decline bench to do some abs, and uh, <laughs> he Tom Tom struggled a bit. Definitely different. Uh, I'm kind of glad that he didn't throw a medicine ball at me because if he did, I'd probably fall right back down on my ass, and uh, <laughs> that was um, that was an experience. I'm not so confident in my routine, uh, so I think it might be good moving forward to maybe you know talk to a, a professional at Ryder to maybe get some idea of a specific routine that they would use, maybe like an athletic trainer or something like that, so we'll have to see. Um, over the past couple of weeks, I haven't really felt any change in how I perceive myself or how I generally feel. I mean, obviously I feel a lot more comfortable with all the exercises that I'm doing, but I don't feel 
more fit if that's even a feeling. The weigh-in this week went fantastic. Uh, he weighed in at 279 pounds, which is six pounds lighter than last week. At first I was shocked. I thought there was something wrong with the machine. Uh, I decided to step off and get back on again. And once again, the second time that I did it, it said 279. So that's, that's a six pounds from what I was. And I really didn't think I'd be six pounds less until maybe week five. You know, I wasn't really expecting to get to 20 pounds, but I mean, after three weeks of working out and I'm already down six pounds, uh, I think it's actually a realistic goal to get to 20 pounds in 10 weeks. Uh, and I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now that I know that it's actually an attainable goal. Looks like he's working hard. Now let's check out another local restaurant with Jessica and Nicole. Each week, I will be highlighting one food establishment that is near campus. These places will all be delicious, inexpensive, and convenient. This week, let's go down the road to a cozy little bagel shop. Maidenhead Bagel is the number one place nearby to get great bagels and other morning favorites. Well, probably the first thing is that it's close by. It's just a half mile down the road. Uh, and you can get sort of anything you want. Not only do they have a large variety of bagels, but they also give you the opportunity to be creative. Here you can make your own sandwiches. You can choose any kind of bagel you like and everything that goes on it. Or substitute that bagel for a donut, like some did with the Burkham, which is pork roll egg and cheese all between a glazed donut. They would come in and they made this concoction on their own that they would always order just for themselves. And then they saw some of the other things that were up there that were made by some of the workers that are here. Um, and they said, can we put this up as a, as a special? We'll promote it at school. And we said, sure, why not? And it doesn't end there. Maidenhead also provides salads, hamburgers, and other goodies like donuts and muffins but they are most known for their delicious sandwiches, like the beloved classic pork roll egg and cheese on a bagel. With the right amount of cheese and a well-toasted bagel, this is a college kid's favorite. And if you're having a get-together, then you have to bring the party bagel. It's 14 inches of bagel filled with meats, cheeses, tomatoes, and more. Most importantly though, everything is fresh at Maidenhead, from the bagels and salads to the large assortment of cream cheese. Maidenhead offers great food, creativity, and friendly service. So go pay them a visit, because no day is complete without a nice hot coffee and a delicious bagel. They are located only five minutes down the road in Lawrenceville, or you can call in an order at 609-219-9292. And this has been Restaurant of the Week with Jess and Nicole. That place looks great. Tune in next week for another What's on Your Plate. Happy eating!